Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back into the Dota 2 Canada Cup Season 6 group stages. We are here with Group B, the first matchup between all of the groups in Group B. Team Leviathan versus Unknown uh, Gaming is going to be the matchup here to start things off today. Uh, we're going to jump right into the draft, of course. This is a best of one, and the first game that Leviathan will be playing tonight, I think out of, I believe, two games, if not three. I'm not 100%. In fact, they're playing all three. Actually, it's Unknown rather than have a triple header, so... I know we're going up against Leviathan here at Group B, and uh, this should be pretty interesting. This will probably be the best match of the night. T Show, as well as Payne, they're good, solid teams, but for Unknown, this is going to be the biggest test for them. They'll be going up against the long standing American squad of Leviathan. They've recently got a, a new player. They're kind of trying a couple of players out. They had MJW for a while. He didn't work out. He's actually on another team in this tournament. For Unknown, they have a lot of stand ins here, apparently. I don't know if they're actual stand-ins or if they're actual players on this team, but uh, we are going to get into the draft. We're going to get right underway here for Group B, of course. This is on Mood Duck TV. My name is Boy. Joining me today is Pimp Muckle uh, doing production and observing. We have LPQ on the stats, and we also have Purge doing the analysis. Purge, what's up? Not much. I love it when you you start the the intro because I know that I can go like go to the bathroom, maybe like eat two meals, and then come back, and that's like I won't I won't miss anything. Like you won't have like called me out and asked me to talk yet. Do you want me to like I can make it even longer for you also? If that yeah, that, ideally, here. like preferably bring me in like right before the last pick is done. Cause, oh, okay, we just I mean, like I skip have... the draft altogether. I'm actually okay with that. I'm I could okay play with... more Gem TD. You know what I mean? Yeah. See, that's multitask. You have two clients of Dota open, and boom. I wish I Gem could. Gem easy, man. It's okay. Well, I mean, I'm, Slacks doesn't think seem uh, seem to think so. So, but whatever. Well, we're into the game now. There's an IO first pick for Leviathan. This is the power of friendship. This is the true power of friendship right here. It's Team Leviathan, man. These guys have been around forever. They love playing with each other. They all like they even Sounds when they good. were at like TI, they played at a LAN and they're all just playing Dota together. I'm like, who does that? Who just plays Dota together? And I'm like, oh wait, I do that. What? <laughs> it's it's cool that they play together though. Uh, a lot of teams don't necessarily have that kind of cohesion, and maybe even if they aren't going to be the top team in the world or something like that, at the very least they're getting a lot of practice in right now, and that's going to further them all as players in the in the now. So it's definitely beneficial for them to continue grinding, even if they haven't had a lot of success as a team. Um, if you're having fun and you're learning a lot and you're getting paid a little bit, I think go for it. They actually just qualify for WCA. Um... They played against Team YP, but the big game was, I think, between them and Archon, and the winner of that series was going to make it so that they could get to WCA, which I believe is in China. I'm not sure exactly where in China, but they will be going to that tournament cool. later on down the road. Um, <clears throat> so, so Leviathan, obviously, they're they're probably not the favorites here, but for Unknown, there's a lot of stand-in tags right now. And Greedy, and I think ZZ is ZTOC. I'm not 100% sure on that. Um... Probably not the real Bulba, uh, but the rest of them are standings, as far as I can tell. I'm not sure if this is the actual lineup or not. I'll have to, to take a look real quick and see what they've been playing with recently. Yeah, it's going to make predictions a lot harder. Um, th I think they played pretty darn well at the Frankfurt Major. They they surprised a lot of people, and they did well there, but with uh, standings, who knows what could happen. I'm surprised. Uh, Z-Talk is the ZZ, so I was correcting that, and then, of course, Greedy. Um, but I have to make sure that I can see who else is playing for them. I really, because I don't know how many actual matches they've played recently. They've been playing a little bit, I think, in a couple of random tournaments. There's one they played in called the Choco Cup, and then another one called the Battle Fury 2015. I think a lot of these are South American tournaments, so that's kind of interesting. Uh, let's see, they played up against Obsidian Boys two days ago. Who were they playing with? Uh, let's see. Kotaro Hayama was in there. Uh, Atune was in there. Atune is lights, apparently. That's Atune, the uh, the mid player. Excel is not in the game. Uh, and that Bulba stand-in is I don't know who that is. So Serengay and Bulba are two people I don't know, but lights is in fact Atune. Do you got that? Did you get all that? Okay, so it's basically three out of five. Right. Of exactly. Being, or unknown. Yes. It's pretty close. Okay. Yeah. I mean, they have Atune. He's a pretty solid part of their, their core roster, so that's very important. They have but that him. said, are we going to see Armlet Rush Alchemist again? Because I love that build. It was really cool. It's not good this game because there's an Ancient Apparition in the game, but um, it's it was a cool build the, when they played that in the Frankfurt Major. What a hype set, man. Yeah, that, I, that's actually a sick build. Uh, I don't know if that's going to be the case. 
I'm sure A Tune will Definitely do a lot of shenanigans. You know, I'm just glad they didn't give him an SF because he likes to just taunt for days with his freaking SF, and it just, you know, I can what I'm respect about. Leviathan. I can respect Leviathan for that one for sure. Yeah, they did not want to get taunted. I'm sure like they'll still pick a taunt here. Sam, for for example, can taunt you if you really if you're really feeling up to it. But they they go for the same, which is here that sort of seems to play, see some play, but like it's not the the most picked hero. She's a bit. Uh, she's a bit squishy, obviously. She can't run very fast, but she has a lot of potential to jungle early on. She's got nuke potential. Her ultimate is 10 times better than what it used to be. It's always yeah. very nice. And her aura is her aura's really nice with Alchemist and Darkseer right now. Alchemist, any extra mana that he gets is another, an extra acid spray, which is more zoning for the solo mid or more jungling. So she can also do things where she can stack up jungle camps, kill the large creeps, and leave all the small ones there, and Alchemist can easily kill those. And he's happy with that because of Goblin's Greed, that he's getting as much for a medium creep as anybody else would get for a large creep. So gold-wise, Alchemist is going to be pretty cool with this. Yeah, I think Alk's fine. Anything that can help him, just have a good time. He's okay with it. And again, as long as they don't go the ratings build, I'll be a happy camper. If we see that ratings build, I'm going to flip my table and just get a little bit upset. But... Uh... At least there's a tiny eye, which means there is going to be some action. They also get the Ancient Apparition, which is good against the Alchemist Chemical Rage with the Ice Blast. So no no qualms there about Leviathan's picks. They have the tiny IO combo, and they've run this before. They're obviously very confident. They've played together. They have good chemistry. So tiny IO is completely a fine choice here for Team Leviathan. And the Burst Image is very good against all of these heroes, in fact. Alchemist is not inherently tanky. You get a blink on tiny, you jump on that Alchemist, and boom, he's dead with one combo. Maybe one extra right click as well. Yeah, the only thing Leviathan's missing right now is the stun setup to make an easy ice blast. Like, yeah, you can use Avalanche Toss, but that only gives you about one, one and a half seconds or so. And so they'll need somebody else that can, can be their initiator, whether that's going to be like a Beastmaster or something like that. We saw Spirit Breaker yesterday, but that was in the support role for um, for FDL, I believe. They could do offlane Spirit Breaker. It's an option. Uh, my, it's looking pretty good here with Bounty Hunter, actually. Yeah. Against Bounty Hunter, just get a dust. You find where he is on the map. You you go for the kill. You can relocate on top of him. I actually would really like an SB yeah, that's, in, in this game. It's an easy kill. Bounty Hunter, if he gets caught out in a bad position, that's an easy pickup coming out on the side of Leviathan. So I I imagine that they could go for it. I was going to say Night Stalker, but it was banned out. So is the Tusk, surprisingly enough, for Leviathan. Again, that's not a hero we've seen a lot from the American squads that have been playing so far in this tournament, or even the South American squads. But Tusk, still, you can't ever really let it get it through. And then Bounty Hunter comes down, and this is the first time I've seen this in a while as well, but I know they want to get some extra gold. This is, I mean, if this Bounty Hunter starts getting kills, they get the track up, and the Alchemist already has, obviously, Grievel's Greed, they'll get a lot of gold very quickly, and they could kind of snowball out of control. However, with Tiny getting an early blank, perhaps they'll keep them in check, and if Leviathan do go for the Spirit Breaker, there is always... Uh, that to make sure they can catch up the bounty as well. I'm trying to think of what other offline heroes are available for Leviathan besides Spirit Breaker. I mean, there's a lot, I'm sure, but I'm drawing a blank right now. Tide Hunter. I... I'm just kidding. Definitely not Tide Hunter. Uh, Slaughter yeah. is still in the pool. Slaughter is still in the pool. Could be a Slaughter. That's right. Decent hey. against Bounty Hunter. Good against Alchemist. Mm -hmm. May not fit into what they want to do with their draft, but I think either I think either the Spirit Breaker or the Slaughter would be okay here. I, I don't see them going for... Th those are the top two. I mean, Slaughter especially, because they banned it out a ton, I believe. I'm, uh, LPQ, I think, put some stats together today, and I think that was one of the, the bans that they went for the most, but they're going for the clock instead, which is also fine, I think. Uh, it's pretty easy to lock down a Darkseer. Um, he's able to make sure the Darkseer can't really get away because he has to hit his way out of the cogs, whereas the Darkseer can usually just surge away from any sort of aggression, you know, via slow or things like that. Um, he's good at making sure he kites the Alchemist. Maybe he gets a four staff, so he doesn't want to get right clicked by the Alchemist. Good in catching out the Bounty Hunter and Crystal Man. We'll find solo kills. I am definitely okay with this pickup and very good with the tiny IO relocate combo. Purge. Reserve time. Yeah, I think it'll be very good. It has a lot of good uses. Um, their early game pressure will be strong. I think that's that's a big thing actually that Clockwork provides as an offlaner. Um, like you said, he can get solo kills on some of the low HP supports, but he can also look for relocate kills using rocket, using hookshot, all that stuff. So their their range is now basically a hookshot within the range of clockwork, which is much more dangerous in a lot of ways than, than what they would have had otherwise. It also does help set up the AI Ice Blast to a certain extent. Um, you yeah, kind of have true. to predict a little bit. It's not the easiest setup in the world, not like a Spirit Breaker, because you can see where you're charging, you see when they're going to hit. It's a little bit more, you know, on the fly, I think, for this kind of combo. But I'm fine with it still. And now, the question for Unknown is, well, what do we put in the safe lane? How do we deal with the clockwork? How do we deal with the relocate? 
And they banned out the Jug, and I thought that would have been a fine combo or a fine hero to have against the Tiny Io combo, but they're going to get that away from themselves and say, we're going to go for something different here. I, I don't think Jug is that amazing against Tiny Io, to be honest, because if he gets initiated on, he can just die in the initial burst. Um, Omni Slash, it's not that great against Tiny, in my opinion. He's just way too high in HP and usually will eventually build armor items. So I, I'm not a huge fan of Jug. I think they definitely could have built, picked... Uh, better carries. I think what Unknown has to worry about is they have very weak disables right now and a lot of their heroes are a little bit squishy solo so I think Jug would have been solid for a Leviathan there. I, yeah. I understand the ban. Well, 26 seconds left. So would you rather have a tankier safe laner or just somebody that can reliably get to the safe lane? Obviously with the squishy heroes they have now they're really prone to getting comboed. So maybe somebody with a higher HP pool Should be uh, something that combos well with an Ancient Apparition in a dual lane scenario so could be like Wraith King Probably not Wraith King. I don't think Wraith King would be ideal against Alchemist, but um, something that's an, that's great with an A dual lane. Um, there's a couple of heroes that combo just amazingly with A. Viper picked up. Um, uh, yes. Pretty good against Tiny. Yes. Okay versus all of the Leviathan heroes, actually. I, I like the Viper pick. I'm a fan. This is my hero. G it's going to make their mid lane a lot harder, too. He played like an 85 minute Viper game earlier today. He actually oh, really? got, he was the highest in net worth and he, he was, they lost to Alliance in, in one of the rattiest Dota games I've ever seen. And of course, Alliance being Alliance, but he did very well. I mean, you get to the late game and Viper is no slack. So that's the second game I've seen Viper get to the late game and actually own. So I don't know, maybe the agility game was enough, but. That's, that's G man. He actually makes Viper look like a late game hero. Guy's, guy's amazing. He played yeah. an amazing Viper game at, at the Frankfurt Major as well. Really good player. So, Ember Spirit. Alright, interesting. We'll have to see how this turns out. It's more than likely going to be what? Tiny A, Tiny IO mid lane. You could do safe lane Ember with AA and then Clockwork in the off lane for Leviathan. And Yeah. I don't try think you want to put Ember versus Viper. I think no. this makes sense. Even Bounty's kind of scary though in the mid lane. I, I'm not sure I like the vulnerability of Leviathan's mid lane. Uh, the Viper made things pretty tough, with especially with the Bounty Hunter as well. So I think that's the one place where Leviathan could get easily punished in the early game. Wait and see. Uh, I don't know. I, I just feel as though the Viper kind of makes it so unknown could snowball even harder. And the Alchemist, sure, you know, he, he won't be as effective early on in the game. He'll get his Grievous Greedy. The Bounty Hunter will start running, roaming around. If Viper gets a kill or two... They get Bounty Hunter involved. They can start snowballing out of control. But, you know, the Tiny could do the same. The Ember Spirit could do the same thing as well. However, we'll have to wait and see as we do get ourselves into the game. It is the first game of the night. Unknown are on a triple header today. They have, of course, this game. They're up against T-Show. And then after that, they're against Payne. So all South American matches today, including this one for Unknown. Well, they're South American themselves going up against the American squad of Leviathan. Versus T-Show after, which is a Brazilian squad, and then I'm um, Pain, which I think is also Brazilian. I'm not 100% sure on that. Yeah, Pain is Brazilian. Very, very long-standing organization, Pain Gaming. Uh, yeah, that they've been around since, forever. like, Dota 1 days. Yep. Like, legitimately, like, four years. Very different players, I'm sure, now than what they were back then, but, yeah. They used to have King RD. He is on T-Show, as far as I know. They might have switched things up again. And okay. Well, who knows, because honestly, I have no idea half the unknown players, because I believe they are using some stand-ins. I might be wrong about this. Flying Zebra will not scout out the Bounty Hunter. He's looking to maybe throw a sentry or two at some camps, maybe block them, or just harass them. It looks like he's just going to throw a right click onto Flying Zebra, and he'll exchange some, he'll exchange some ticks, and so they'll back away from each other. Down bottom, they're going to secure the Alchemist, the bottom Bounty Rune, so that he can get off to an early bottle. Uh, Bulba, the stand-in. That's actually Bulba. That's awesome, but I doubt that's sure? the case. I'm, I'm almost positive it's not. The actual bowler. he did he did talk to a lot of the unknown players straight balling is what his steam tag is listed as hmm. unless i'm clicking on the wrong person he, well bulba's not an anime oh it is kotaro hayama it's kotaro why is his name bulba because he's friends with bulba maybe i guess that must be it well i thought i guess kotaro hayama changed his avatar okay so it is at least four out of five for unknown men and kotaro hayama is a very big part of their their roster yeah, things go. Where okay. is the CM sitting? She was right here for a second. I don't know what she was doing. The bot there, lane. But... Yeah. Um, trying to get behind the clockwork. That way they can potentially get a. I guess I wouldn't even give him a first blood. Killing clockwork is just not going to happen with an alchemist level one. When he's got Grievous Greed. Who knows? 
And some people try to cut down that tree, so the... Oh, I think that's what she did. Oh, yeah, yeah. She in cut case the tree he, down. Yeah. Or one of these trees down. I, just I don't know in case he, Yeah, just in case he blocked in there. Uh, by killing that tree, it, it forces the creeps to get out. Yeah, exactly. Speaking of getting behind, Zetox nearby in the bounty hunter. He's shadow walked up, and he's like... Well, I could run at you. I think he might have walked through the vision of the tower. I'm not sure. Either way, they're going to put the alchemist in the safe lane, which is not something we see very often. But I'm okay they with did it. it. They did it at the... Frankfurt Major, one of the mm -hmm. few teams that did put Elk in the safe lane. Almost mm -hmm. no other team will even bother doing that just because you're farther away from the runes. But in a lot of ways, you'll you'll gamble on one rune anyways. You'll walk to the rune and say, well, hope it's a bounty. You don't always have the, the luxury of being able to grab whichever one is the bounty. So I guess it kind of works if you're in the safe lane. Last last time he did this, he got a super fast armlet. He went all in on Grievous Greed. He got four points instantly. And he is going to again build the armlet. He buys yeah. the recipe instantly. He so, already has the recipe in the Gloves of Haste. He's already yeah. on point. The reason this build is really good is because, well, I don't know if it's good this game because they're against an AA, but it gives you HP when you turn the armor on, like 500 HP or something like that, or 25 strength. It also gives you 5 armor, it gives you HP regen, it gives you attack speed, it gives you damage. It's basically everything that Alchemist is lacking by having really bad base stats and uh, bad stat gain. So it kind of covers him really effectively by the time he's 6, because the only thing you lose from having armlet, which is HP degen, you cover by turning your ultimate on. So armlet's a really good pickup for Alchemist. Yeah, I think this is a fine choice. He'll get it very quickly. He's already back up to 400 gold. The recipe's already coming out. He'll buy the rest of the items from the side shop, including the helm and, uh, of course, the blades of attack. Bulba in the mid lane, a.k.a. Kotaro Hayama, doing a great job harassing, sitting at 12 last hits. The Tiny has three. This is a solo Viper against a dual lane. I will say Flying Zebra has been out of the lane momentarily to stack up some of these jungle cams, but that is just not great. Of course, this is a Viper. He will own almost any matchup early on. Now top lane AA getting caught out. The Iron Shell Nushim doesn't know. There's no Janata, but still the damage coming through. Z-Talk not fast enough. Had he had the Janata or an Orb of Venom, that's probably a kill. They can still go. They're just contesting the pole camp, and Greedy will come in. Be greedy himself and steal some CS as well. It was such an annoying dual lane. The double iron shell is just so scary. You don't always recognize it in time. And then by then you're too committed and too out of position. You get killed. I mean, I will say at least, ooh, the stand-in, the Ember Spirit, does have 16 last hits. But he's going up against an Alk. They will drop the sentry down. There's the cold feet. They're out of mana. They don't have the suit chase. He just gets enough. They do get the kill. And that is going to be the first pickup of the game, and Greedy will surge himself away as well. No certain Chains, of course, no mana for it either. Five more seconds, and really good sentry placement from Nushim just to make sure they don't get hounded by the Iron Shell and the Bounty Hunter. That's a great dual lane, honestly. Two seconds to disable out of Syrian Chains. It takes four from Cold Feet to score a kill, and a couple extra attacks out of uh, Chilling Touch. They were looking for a toss avalanche from Shiba. They couldn't find it. Zebra. Ooh, there's the Janata. The right click. The poison attack. And Bulba. Kotaro have oh, a high miss. ground miss. Will he get this one? He will. It's going to be enough damage. And Shiba's going to get chased down as well. They won't go under the tower. Bulba or Kotaro I am a Viper. Not that tanky when it comes to tower hits early on in the game. He could have dove for it. Might have gotten the kill. But they're just fine with getting the IO kill and backing away. There's an armlet ready on Alchemist, by the way. Oh, God. Well, that's pretty good. One of the biggest value items in the game, by far. Costs 2300 gold, gives you like 60 damage if you're a strength hero. 25 attack speed, 5 armor, 7 HP regen. It's so good. That's pretty nice. So how is he going to get involved here earlier on? Get to pick up a, a pair of boots and just roam around the map? or I don't uh, think he's he, got a continued farm, right? In the Frankfurt Major game, he got the armlet. And then he got like 3 more items before he bothered to even rotate and teamfight. It was... It was a little bit too farm heavy in my opinion. Interesting. And his team got a little bit in trouble because of it, but even still, his farm was incredible. Well, I'll have to see how things do turn out now. Zetok's still shadowing in the mid lane. They have no sentry ward for the dire side, so Zetok is just ready to go on Shibi here. Zebra's nearby, no overcharge yet. There's gonna be the Janata proc, Bulba, or Kutarayama trying to get in range. Can't quite find it. No Aquila has picked up just yet for the Viper, and that's a huge item choice for the Viper, so I imagine he'll get it sooner rather than later. The Illusion scouts out the big jungle camp here, this Bounty Illusion, getting some great vision, saying, hey, listen, we know it's up here, we can maybe try to take the stack. And still, the last hits for this Tiny, only 6 to the 30 of a Viper. Dear God. That's really the vulnerability that they had with their picks here. They're like the, the Viper pick has just been so strong lately. He's very hard to lane against. He's very good at last hitting if you skill correctly. And he's even going the defensive build. He's got three levels of corrosive skin, and he's buying all survivability items right now. Buckler, Magic Wand. He does not want to get bursted because he knows that if he doesn't, he just continues to stomp this lane. This is, uh... It's pretty difficult to kill him right now. 
And he's still last hitting very well with only one point in Nether Toxin. And harassing very well as well. Oh, they're stealing the stack. Yeah, here's the Iron Shell. Zetok is just going to be shadow walked up. And he's going to take all of these last hits with Greedy nearby in the Iron Shell. And they're just going to go ahead and soak up all the experience, all the gold. And this was the comeback mechanic for Shibby. And now without this... How's he going to get back into this game? No Blink's going to come anytime soon. There's no way they're going to be able to blow up this Viper. And their rotations, they need level 6. I don't know what they're going to do now. That stack is gone. See you later. Bounty is level 4 now. Like, that hurts so bad. They needed a couple more levels to be able to kill that. Either level 4 in IO for the double spirits or more avalanche toss levels. But Unknown is absolutely stomping this game now because the, their dual offlane is, like, incredibly leveled. Meanwhile, mid, they're going to make a go on Shibi. The toss will go. The avalanche went out as well. Vacuum in. That'll provide the kill. Z-Talk actually was pretty low, but the tower hits will go to Greedy instead. And Viper barely takes any damage out of that exchange, and it gets him even closer to his mech. And he's also sitting at level 7 as well. And Flying Zebra is just sitting there like, well, I'm a level 3 IO. And now the wraparound coming up from the Sam She'll put a ward behind the tower. Uh, late Aetun saying there's some maybe latency issues. We'll take a quick pause here. And the only thing going well right now, Purge is Leviathan getting safe lane farm for the Armor Spirit. He's doing pretty well, but everywhere else is pretty goddamn disastrous. The gold disadvantage is, is not good. And to make matters worse, it's a Clockwork, and Clockwork can't really beat very many heroes in a 1v1. Maybe if this was a Slardar and he was 6, he could pressure against the Alchemist and actually threaten him, but Clock can't do that very much. And he's also gone for the max Rocket Flare build, which is more... It's less of a solo killing build and more of a uh, AoE nuke and scout build. This, uh, you want to kind of sit back, fire your flare. If you have some sort of mana regen like a bottle, it's easy to get last hits with as well. And it's good for scouting, like you mentioned, doing some damage, but getting solo kills, you need battery assault, I think, to be super effective. At least two points into it. Jenkins is going to get caught out here by Zetok, and coming in from behind as well is going to be the Crystal Bane. They're going to go with the Janata proc. The Frostbite's up and ready to go. They'll use the Crystal Nova first. The Acid Spray is on the deck, and that's a big pickup. They kill him so easily. The Alchemist comes out with the Acid Spray. They throw up the Frostbite. Easy fall. Coming okay, through. He got the kill, too. Oh, so he's going to be really happy with that. He's got a Mithril Hammer now? Maelstrom? Or... Uh, yeah, I think he did go Maelstrom last time. Yeah. He just bought the recipe as well. So that is absolutely a Maelstrom, and he's going to have his Gloves of Haze very soon as well. So the, the arm that Maelstrom built, the super early game oriented lineup for... The Alchemist now coming out with 56 last hits. His net worth is setting at almost 5,700. And then he can just start running around the map and trying to get kills, I think. Just taking down towers just with the help of the mech. farm all game, maybe. I mean, that's I think he's just going to farm all game. At least for 15 or 20 minutes until he gets, like, three items. And by three items, I mean, like, three medium items. Um, Both Armlet and Maelstrom I've defined as, like, a medium-sized item. He's already got two of them, so he's not far off. Uh, Viper goes for the Vitality Booster, interestingly enough, just to stay a bit, I guess, more tanky, and it doesn't really stop his mech progression, because he already has his Buckler, and he's got enough money for the, um, the Hedris as well, so it's yeah. not like he's that off track of what he needs. It's a really smart item build. It basically says, like, we are stupidly far ahead, and we know that the only way that you guys are coming back is if you kill us in little ganks and things like this. And if you throw 250 HP on a hero that already has 25% magic resistance, it takes like an extra two or three spells to kill you. Like that was an avalanche right there. That did nothing. Hey, we'll get the Viper Shrek off into Flying Zebra. He pops the buckler and he just walks away. Zebra tethered oh, up and overcharging. Now they're going to go ahead with, of course, the huge damage coming out from the Janata, the Vitality Booster. They're just trying to be a bit cheeky and they will get the damage coming out from, of course, the Bounty Hitch Roaming, who's almost level six now. Zebra will fall. Greedy looking for a back. Back can he find it? He's got Surge in one. Instead, they're going to focus their attention to the tower. The Ice Blast will sail through. It should hit onto two of them. Only actually connects to the Zetok. The Flare will fly. I don't think it'll be enough to kill him, but it gets they close. That. They could have yeah. tossed a creep onto him. They could have coordinated that together, but a uh, missed kill for Leviathan. Tiny could have gotten a little bit of gold. Yeah. It would have done enough. So the, the reason that damage wasn't that significant is it was, it was level, level 2 avalanche, which isn't that great, I suppose. But still, it no, looked like tossed, nothing. He could have tossed a creep. He could have yeah. done 225 range damage to him. And that would have definitely put him within shadow range. Yeah. He would have gone down. And I mean, a kill is a kill at this point. Z Talk is going to... He might actually get flared if he's not careful. That would kill him. But uh, he's headed back to the well at this point. Jenkins has it in three seconds. I think he just used it to CSO. No luck there. It's going to be okay. Z Talk healing up. This is why Viper built Buckler and went back for a Booster. He's going to go the Crimson Guard build. Wow. As I just checked Darkseer, and Darkseer was also making a mech, but he actually did this on purpose. Um, we recently saw, I believe, Miracle go for Crimson Guard on Viper as well. Mm -hmm. 
It's kind of a good item build because when you activate the damage block, it's the same for ranged as it is for melee. And it just gives you generically a lot of survivability. So it's probably the best item you could buy to cover you against an AA if you're playing Viper and you just want survivability. Uh, the, the problem here is is that you have, number one, the mech coming out for uh, Greedy, as you mentioned. You have a Crimson Guard coming as well. And then you have an Alchemist with already an armlet. So how do you kill these heroes? Yeah, sure, the CM and the Bantit are going to die, but how much does that actually matter in team fights if they actually do get involved in team fights? I mean, they can definitely solo kill people. It just comes down to A versing them with a little bit of follow-up. They have the tools, but they need to start getting those kills because they're easily going to get out-farmed right now. There's already a blink. That is the three tier two-ish medium items you were talking about for the Alchemist at 10 minutes. You can continue to either farm or look for some fights across the map. They pick up the smoke, which indicates that maybe they want to go for something. But right now, it's just the CM who's already in that mid lane. Top lane, this is the only thing going well for Leviathan. Is the Amber Spirit now trying to build the Boots of Travel. And he's just about uh, 50 gold away from that, and he'll have it here in just a moment. So he's he's trying to keep pace with an Alchemist who's getting free farm in the bottom lane, but that seems very difficult. It's a great Observer Ward, by the way, that scouts out. Jenkins and Nushim as well if he walks up. And ZZZ, or Zetok, still roaming around, has his level 6 in the track now. They'll take a stack here for Shibby, and he gets up to 2,000 gold. Will he still go the blink, and is it going to be enough if he does? We'll have to wait and see. Interesting item build on Nushim here. He's opted for the Hand of Midas before Brown Boots. Very common to see Midas picked up on A, but to go for the recipe first. It's pretty interesting. They may initiate here on clock. They see him. As smoke is going to go. There's going to be the blink in on Simple Concoction. Nushim in trouble. Acid Spray gets fallen. Of course, there's going to be an easy kill with the Acid oh, Spray on the deck. Frostbite. Hookshot away from Jenkins. We'll keep him alive. And he's actually bottling up. He's going to cog himself, so they would have to get push on the other side of the map. Zetok is still nearby with help coming. No. They actually have Kotaro Hayama elsewhere. And Greedy's going to stay in the jungle. Uh, they've rotated the Ember Spirit. He remnants down bottom. He actually remnanted away, I believe, from the unstable concoction. There's no chemical range for 15. He does have the armor at the ready, if it need be. And Leviathan will have to back away from their own jungle as well, as they were not feeling safe. And they were out of mana and health anyways. Uh, we'll see Alchemist probably go SNY next, because he's got a Blade of Alacrity. Not too surprised about this. Uh, AI Splash is going to miss the Crystal Maiden. Oof. She was not where they expected her to be. Very close to death. She has those she, Tranquil Boots. She's, she's a little okay. underleveled, but everybody else on her team is doing super well. I feel like the CM hasn't accomplished a huge amount on Unknown. That's really the only efficiency thing that they're missing. She has two assists, I suppose. Um, everywhere else is uh, going particularly well. Now the Crimson Guard is done. The mech is up in about 10 gold for Greedy. The Glyph will fly. There's no real way that you could contest this if you're Leviathan. So instead, they'll split push bottom with Uu there. He's got his boots of travel now. And he is really the only thing keeping him tied together in this game. Shippy does have the Blank Dagger. It's still only a level 3 Avalanche. He needs that level 4 point, and then he can have the combo. Maybe even 2 points into that. That throw would be nice. Chemical Rage coming in. TPs, they want to defend this. Zetox is going to walk in nearby. Yeah, Aetsu does have the Blank Dagger, and he's going to go right into the creeps instead of just trying to check, catch out of here on the side of Leviathan. Jenkins will back up as well. A Flare will come through. They'll defend their bottom tier tower. Looks like maybe there's a rotation from Unknown, but they're just going to farm mid for now. I like this rotation from Leviathan. They don't necessarily want to engage mid unless they know they can start the fight well. Um, they can shoot rockets top to stop, slow the push, and then they put all the other heroes at the bot tier 1 so that they can get a trade out of this. Their positioning is pretty good. They're playing this game correctly considering they're how behind they are. Maybe he could use his toss right now and take down this tower. There is no glyph available. He's kind of just waiting. There it is. And that'll grab the kill on the tower. Toss. Of course, the shuriken toss comes through after the track comes out. Shibi will blink himself away. It looks like they're getting a position for Unknown to defend this, but couldn't get there in time, and Leviathan will back up smartly, getting a tower kill for themselves. Which is at least something now that they are down 10,000 net worth, so. Oh, and... Raytoon wants to go. He's got the track up. He's going to find Zebra. The Acid Sprite, two right clicks. There's three, I believe. Gets the job done. Kills him so damn quickly. Yep, that's, uh, that's farmed Alchemist, man. He's almost got his SNY as well, so he's extremely farmed. Um, we should be a Midas up on Nushim now. I have an Ice Blast coming bot to slow things down. And it's going to connect onto three. Hookshot oh, misses, the hook though, missed. but the TP's going to come in. Greedy will surge himself away. They've got remnants. They will see the track on Zetok. They fly in. The Searing Chain Slide of Fist. ZZZ in trouble. He gets the mech off, though. Viper Strike comes through. Jake gets in trouble now. Pushed. With the huge vacuum back in, now remnant further, they relocate in. Bulba gets the huge Crimson Guard off, walls on the deck. This is a fight they can't win. Zebra already low, the relocate out won't be available. The Shirk Toss, double kill for the Alchemist. They're looking for more. They found three. Can they get the unstable concoction off? No. 
Ooh, ooh, Slide of Fist will avoid any sort of damage coming out from Atoon. They'll take the Tier 1 tower, walls down to the deck, but a mech and Crimson Guard make it impossible for them to fall. And another fight that goes the way of Unknown. And the fight would have been so different if Jenkins would have landed his hook there. It was so important because the Ice Blast landed on three heroes. They could have hookshot it in, thrown out the rocket, maybe a couple of battery cells. Somebody would have died and the relocate could have came earlier, but they they just missed that opportunity. And then they kind of felt like they had one later. They put some effort into it, but the damage was just not there. The Crimson Guard and the mech were just too much. Well, those are going to be up pretty soon again. Mech's up in 9 seconds. Crimson Guard is up in 20. They might want to continue this. And you look at it. The Unstable Concoction getting charged by Atu. He's going to jump in and stun. Acid Spray on the deck. The Shurken Toss is going to go. They will get the kill. Ice Blast under 4. The mech comes out before him. Jenkins getting Viper Struck as well. They're going to chase him down with right clicks. And now Kotaro I'm out once more. He wants both. He wants Nushima and Jenkins. He wants the entire world. He'll find it. He might die though. He's got the Crimson Guard. Slide of Fist. Not enough damage. Rubbing it away. Buyback coming in from the room. The Empress Pretty. Remnant's in as well. Another Unstable Concoction. Zebra in trouble. One more right click. Double kill for A2. He's wicked sick. He'll get the triple. Arm Toggle and surged away. He's got the blink in three. Pops the Crimson Guard up. They're still diving. And now they say, back to the tower, boys. We've got all that we came for. An unknown will take this game almost handily. 14 to 1. No GG yet, but it's feeling like it's getting to that point, Purge. Yeah, they're just, they outplayed them in the lanes. They stole those stacks. It basically turned the game into a losing scenario, into a super losing scenario. And they just haven't found any kills. They had to get some ganks off, they had to get some kills, and they just haven't found them. Yeah, um, well, the dieback from the Ember Spirit is is pretty much the nail in the coffin, right? I mean, it has to be. There's just That's your one hero that has to be doing stuff in the late stages of the game. Unless there is a massive throw where Unknown decide to say, we're not going to use any of our items, we're going to get caught by every spell imaginable. I don't see this game going back into their favor. Into I mean, the game's favor. not over yet. They do have a tiny either way. They've got burst damage with an A in the clockwork, but they have to get kills. Right. It's the only possible way they win this game is if they start getting some ganks off. And it's going to be hard now because look what the, the bounty hunter's doing. He's tracking up heroes. It's, they know where they yeah. always are. The blink will not avoid the unstable concoction damage, but he will make it safer for him to just actually get back towards his team. This will lead to a tier 2 tower more than likely in the mid lane. A2 is sitting on 15k net worth. His GPM is that of 856. And he is almost twice that of the Viper who absolutely decimated a dual lane mid. This goes to show how good this Alchemist hero can be in the right hands. Now, Siri chains out the Greedy up at the top lane. He's going to try to surge himself. It'll do so. And he actually vacuum onto the Ember Spirit. The Ember Spirit does not get the tower. Gets denied in the end. He's got remnants away. No, he actually doesn't have any on the deck. But he's got to try to solo up against Greedy with the Iron Shell. He needs to leave. He's got no blink. He's got his boots to travel. Triple Remnant. The mech comes out. The Ice Blast will sail through. But that's not going to hit on Greedy. All the meanwhile, down bottom lane. Shibi in trouble. Good Avalanche coming in. But there's the Unstable Concussion with the Acid Spray on the deck. It's too much damage. And Shibi gets melted. It was a good attempt at a kill there. But um, only had one point in Fire Remnant. Uh, Could have done a bit more damage if he didn't. Obviously, he's gone the standard build. So I can't fault him for that. But... He needed to coordinate a little bit more with where the Ice Blast was going to be. Maybe ask Nushim to ping exactly where his Ice Blast was going to hit. That way he could play around that. If they could have gotten that kill there, that would have put two on the board. And would have given Ember Spirit some ability to snowball. So, more slight miscoordination coming out of Leviathan. The Roche is going to be taken uh, by Unknown. And Leviathan don't... I mean, Jenkins can maybe go for... A, I, I think he could try... I'm He's not even sure try. they know this is happening. The remnant's gonna go through. I mean, he has to try. I think at this point. He put the stop time. Yeah, I, th I agree. This is a this is a scenario where you go for it. But unfortunately, there's creeps on him. Yeah, he can't he can't find the right initiation. And he, even if he did, they're gonna see that it's only Kotaro right there, and they're gonna make space elsewhere with Atune as well as the CM just trying to find out other their spots to find kills. Jenkins is gonna get Janata. He'll drop up the dust. He's got the Hook shot at the ready, but he can't get it off instead. Right. They're gonna Oh, should be actually getting the Roche or rather helping to get a kill at the Roche pit. Slide of fist searing chain is not gonna go remnant away. Kutara Hayama's low, already used the Crimson Guard, but Shibi will fall immediately as the Maelstrom proc will go. Acid Spray still on the Roche on the other side. Hookshot was already used. I believe it missed. And Zetok is just zoning out Nushim. In fact, Nushim's about to die if he's not careful. Shuriken Toss is going to fly. That gets the kill. And Jenkins in trouble. The overcharge coming through. Jenkins trying to melee down Zetok on the other side. They will get the Viper, the Aegis, the Immortality. Zetok still in trouble, however. Almost gets Seabright. Oh, the double kill does get out. And they actually get the kill on the clockwork in exchange. So it's a three for one. That's a bounty hunter soloing a couple heroes now. And the unstable concoction made too to just blinks in. And meanly throws it in the face of the Ember Spirit. Man, there's just like, feels like there's nothing Clockwork can do at this point. 
He missed a lot of opportunities early, and because of that, I think he's he's got nothing to do now. Uh, Jenkins is gonna come back in. Toss Avalanche combo into Greedy! He didn't have the mech, I don't believe, and even if he did, he couldn't get it off. It's down for 17 seconds, and nice now Kotar Hamel pops the Crimson Guard. Okay, they're gonna be Aegis pop here. Do they re-engage here? They have the Frostbite up on the Shibby. He's gonna get Crystal Nova as well. Kotar Hamel is back up. He doesn't have his Viper Strike, but his Poison Attack is doing work. Atoon's nearby. They're still defending. Their death timers are really, really, really low. Good high ground vision. Unstable concoction. Jump in on Jenkins. If he died, it would be a dieback. There's the Searing Chains coming out. No real mana coming out for Atoon at this point. He does have the Chemical Rage up, which will provide some mana regen. Plus, of course, he's got the Arcane Aura. He'll start pushing in the bottom lane, and the rest will either go top to get the Tier 2, or mid to push into the Tier 3. Is he going to Moon Shard? He's probably going to finish his Mjolnir, and then uh, go, I think, AC. It's most likely what he needs. Yep. That's exactly Maybe a BKB. Right. His Mjolnir is going to be completed for sure. Amber Spirit, did he buy anything? He's actually kind of getting close to a Battle Fury. Yeah, he's been farming quite well, honestly, considering... The circumstances of the game. All right, Meta style almost done for the Viper. Yeah, I, this is the thing. I guess if you do get a Battle Fury, then you have some way of. I mean, you already have okay creep clear as it stands right now, and then you have a Battle Fury. It's even harder to push it to the high ground. They did sentry this one ward over towards this tier three tower on the other side of the tier three. They throw yet another one up. So high ground vision is a uh, in abundance, or at least it's trying to be in abundance for unknown. It's a smart ward, basically, because everybody anticipates if a push comes at the stage, you're going to put a sentry down to check for that observer ward. So instead, he puts it on the opposite side where they weren't pushing, and then he can get away with the observer ward. And they still get some vision out of it. Maybe they can get lucky and catch a smoke as well. Not to mention, of course, Zatok will have tracks up by the time they push up into the high ground, or at least he'll try to. There's the Mjolnir being finally delivered for A2 now, and like you said, Assault Kuros could come next to BKB if he really wants it. Also, it could be a fine item choice. He's got his SMY. He's already very tanky with his armlet. He's going to pop the Unstable Concoction. Trax's going to go force first. He's going to blink in. Unstable will fly. Doesn't have the Acid Spray in the deck. And just trying to zone Jenkins back. Backdoor Protection is up, so they can't take the tower quite yet. That's going to go away here in just a second once the Creep Wave does reach the tower. Maybe wait and see. I wonder if they realize there's a ward. They probably do because he did charge so far past. But they're going to have to fight with that ward up. It's nighttime too, so this doesn't make things very easy for them. Oh, Avalanche on to two. No toss back. Just caught the tail end of him there. Slight of his coming out. See, this is they're doing some decent damage here. And he, still, he just got the Battle Fury. And now it looks like I know when we're saying, okay, we'll back up for now. We're not going to do anything too crazy. And so Leviathan successfully hold. They don't lose a Rax. They don't lose a Tier 3 even. And this is going to give them at least a little bit of room to work with. Room that they desperately need. If they get Rax, the game more or less ends. But now they have potential to continue going for it. They just have to get some kills. The 25,000 net worth lead coming out for a note, it certainly is. Are they going to find Z-Talk here? It looks like they will. There's going to be the cock push. Ice Blast is going to sail through. He's dead either way. Kills a kill. Yeah, Jenkins accidentally killed his own cog. Um, Should have just kept him in there, in my opinion. But Yeah. Either way, out. it's fine. Uh, you also talked about the BKB. That's exactly what the Alk bought, by the way. I believe it's flying out with the recipe for the Mansa first coming out to Kotaro Hayama. And then A2 yeah. will grab his uh, his BKB, and I think that might signify the beginning of the high ground push. Yeah, the reason he bought this is because the only thing he dies to now is burst damage, like magic burst. So if he gets a BKB, then he doesn't have to worry about that at all. It and... also can stop some of the uh, AI splash damage. That's kind of nice to have as well. Yep. Essentially going to be up to the Ember to, to get some physical damage up on him. I mean, maybe the Tiny can right-click him once or twice. Does He's getting closer and closer to Agadim, so Shibi, Shibi's not that far off, but... Even that, I mean, you're really relying at this point on a Toss Avalanche combo with the Tiny here. I mean, that's what Shibby's really kind of useful for at this point. Yeah, Getting in an Agus is going to be nice, though. I think it's more kill everybody on Unknown, kill everybody on Unknown, and then kill the Alchemist is their only solution right now. Unless they do Ice Blast combos. Avalanche Toss, Ice Blast with a Rocket and some Ember Searing Chains. That's the only way Alchemist dies, basically. Yep. He could probably much, he could pretty much 1v5 them, right? Like, I, I don't think that's out of the realm of possibility here. He could initiate and kill at least one, maybe two heroes, yeah. Let's see, they're going to go for the bottom tier three push. Did they do any tower damage here? They did. So this tower's at half health. They've got the glyph at the ready. And Jankets could keep things back with the cogs. They have Slide of Fist. They have the Ice Blast. They have good crit clear, but Shibby is very far from base. Bad TP. And the same could be said for Zebra. So they're going to have to high sell it back there immediately. The Ember Spirit can see me back within 10 seconds. I, he might have a remnant. He does. It's all the way back in the well. He'll drop another one there just in case. 
McGlyph's gonna go. The CM is looking for a potential target. He has an ulted this entire game. Good oh, slide Mr. Chains. They get the double avalanche toss. The mech comes out a bit too late. Zetok will survive, but the CM is not so lucky. Now a jumping in. Vacuum's gonna go. There's the wall. New ship gets blown up by the unstable. The BKB is gonna get popped, and it's time for him to go. Then miss another hook shot for Jenkins, however, and Greedy pushed back in, but the rack's already getting destroyed. The range racks is done. Slap chop. And just going to work on the racks, and both will fall within a half second of each other. And that's it. It just it's it's just that quick, man. It was looking so good for Leviathan too. The two heroes got caught together. The tiny followed up, and unfortunately, the force staff from the the bounty hunter spread them apart. If they would have both been on top of that, and maybe them throw an A ice blast there, they just would have lost that whole fight. But the biggest mistake came from Nushum getting out of position on the ancient apparition. As soon as he got initiated on, he was able to get killed, and he wasn't able to contribute with his ice blast. And he needs to have his ice blast, ice blast for the fight to go well. He probably came forward, tried to do a cold feet, and they got vacuumed, and then he was in a bad spot. Yeah. Good vac wall into two. It ends the fight pretty quickly. I mean, even if it was some of the big targets, Ember Spirit realized, hey, I actually can't do anything here. I think he tipped it up top immediately afterwards, and they decided to just stay there for a while. Or maybe Rem did it. I'm not sure. But nonetheless, the Rax is gone now. And at 26 minutes into the game, if they get another Aegis, this game is, I, I think, pretty much over. They've already lost the one set of Rax. They can't really deal with the damage of the Alchemist now with this BKB. He'll probably sell an item soon. I mean, he's essentially six slot. He just sold... Uh, what did he just sell? His armlet? He buys a butterfly? Alright, cool. Interesting well. build. Um, very good against Ember's right click. Makes him attack really fast, gives him a couple armor points. It's like, what, four armor or something like that? Five armor? It's okay. He basically sold his armlet to get that. So basically his armor is just the same. His damage is... Technically a little lower, but he attacks faster. I don't know. This is a weird ass choice. I, I think it's maybe for a combination of the flutter and evasion, but I, th I think the movement speed. He I already guess. has the SMY and a blink and a and bots. I don't even know if you really need the movement speed. Yeah, I don't know. This is kind of strange. I would have rather that he got something like a Scotty because it or stacks with Mjolnir, gives him a slow, gives him like 750 HP, gives him like even... the equivalent armor that a butterfly would have. AC even what might have been fine. Or... I don't know. I would prefer raw HP, I think, when you're worrying about nukes and things like that. But True. He's got his BKB, he's got to jump in. He does not find his stun. He'll stun himself with the chemical rage, and he regen pretty quickly with that, so no big deal. Drop the acid spray down, and the lightning bolts will flow as he takes down a creep wave. And now the tier 3 tower is in trouble. The Manta style has been popped, the Crimson Guard will go, the Colt Feet has been popped up. He can use the BKB. Looks like he's just going to resign himself to getting stunned. As Kutar Hayama keeps going out of the melee racks and XD. Wow. He doesn't They're gonna jump in. Back wall is gonna go on to three. The Crystal Nova. Where's the ult CM? You gotta use it. She gets pushed back with the cogs. Doesn't matter. Atoon's already killed. The ult is just there for zoning out and beyond godlike for Atoon. Jump in sleight of fist. Not enough damage. He's actually getting pretty low. The ice blast was up, but he does have the chemical rage, and he will rage it up thusly. Now he's going to pop the unstable concoction again. He's looking for another target. Avalanche will fly. He can't get the stun off. He'll stun himself. Shibby can jump in, he will. Avalanche, not gonna go, he's got the toss, but now the BKB is popped in. Look at the damage! Shibby just gets sliced down. Vacuum in again, they were looking for the Amber Spirit, they can't find it. He'll run it away. And Leviathan are, they just did not want to tap in, or tap out yet, but, well, that's it. As I say that, they will call the GG. And Unknown will take their first game in Dota 2 Candy Cup Season 6, handedly. 28 minutes in. Well, that one was pretty one-sided. Um, Unknown basically had great lanes, good setups, and then they absolutely just stomped going into the mid-game. Had a huge advantage, and Leviathan just didn't get any kills. Like, they had to get kills on the map, and they missed way too many hook shots. I really feel like that was uh, one of the things that would have allowed them to get back in the game, and they weren't able to do that. So, either get more last hits mid against the Viper, or, I mean, even ganking mid with the Clockwork was something that you can do, you know? Leave the lane, get a smoke... Smoke with your aisle, wrap around, kill Viper right at the start. You can do stuff like that. But instead, he sat in his lane, he got six, but he didn't get anything out of his six. So uh, I, I think uh, a decent amount of the blame, at least for the, the comeback potential, was on Jenkins this game. Yeah. But either way, they were playing so far uphill. Yeah, I mean, right from the get-go, maybe about you know 10 minutes into the game, they were down about 5,000 net worth. We'll talk more about the game as we get into our post-game show here in just a second. But for now, we'll take a quick commercial break, guys. Stick around here on Moonduck TV. Make sure you follow the channel at Moonduck TV on Twitter as well. And with that being said, we'll be right back.